through it all, still standing strong in the Lord. Do you look up that definition, still? It means nevertheless. Nevertheless, we're still standing. Through the storm and the rain, the songwriter says, the heartache and the pain, in season and out of season, that we are still standing to make his name great. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is going to come from the scripture that has been used for this anniversary. And that is 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. And I am going to ask that we recite this together. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. Nevertheless, we are still standing strong in the Lord. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you that have joined us by live streaming, as well as those who will join us later on in the week by radio, and as well as those of you who have come in to worship with us this morning. It is a beautiful sight to see, a beautiful sight to behold. Amen. God's people coming in to worship and know that you are always, you are always welcome. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just come before you to say thank you for another day's dawning. We thank you that you woke us up early this morning. You touched us with your finger of love. We thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Father, that then you gave us the mindset to have a heart prepared to come into worship. We thank you, Father God, for safe passage from, from home to here because even that is a, is a, it's a journey. We thank you, Father God, that when you allowed us to roll up on the church ground that we were met with smiling faces we were met with open hearts. And even though we may not have even said anything, and our mouths were covered with masks, there was a gleam in the eye that said, I am thankful and I am glad to be here. We thank you, Father God, for another day's journey. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of being able to come into worship. We thank you, Father, from where you've brought us up until this present time. We thank you for the 188 years for safe passage, for safe keeping. We thank you, Father, for every word or prayer that's gone forth. We thank you for every word of your spoken word that has gone forth. We thank you for every soul that's been changed for every soul that's been saved, for every life that's been changed. We thank you. We thank you for what you've already done, for what you're doing right now, and for, for what you are yet to reveal to us. We thank you, Father. We know if it had not been the Lord on our side, where would we be? We know, Father, that we have come this far by faith, and we've come leaning and depending, and we've come trusting in your holy name and in your holy word. And even though, Father God, there are times that we may be physically tired, spiritually, Father, we can say that we have, we're not tired. We don't feel any ways tired. That we feel like that we can run on just a little while longer. That we feel like we can run on just a little farther. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us a desire to want to do and to want to be the Christians that you've called us to be. Father, we thank you. The songwriter said, the choir just sung, that we, we are here to make your name great because we know that it's not in and through anything that we have done on our own, but it's because of everything that you have done through your grace and through your mercy, through your goodness, and through the blood, the shed blood of your son, Jesus Christ. 
Father, we thank you, but we are standing on your promises. We are leaning and we are depending on you. And we're still trusting in your word and in your name. We thank you, Father, that this church has been founded on the foundation of love. But when we say that we have been we're founded on the foundation of love, we also know that underneath that is a blanket of prayer that we stand on. My mind just runs back now to one of our congregation members that was asked early in our trial, what are y'all doing over at First Baptist? And the, so the reply was, we praying. We was praying then and we still praying. We know that it is prayer that has kept us. It is prayer that has continued to hold us. And then it is prayer that's going to take us from one day to the next. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing on this day. We thank you for what you're yet to reveal to us. We ask that you would just help us that as we go out, into a world that we continue to let our light shine, that we will bring a dying world in, that we will save every man and woman, boy and girl, and let them know that there is reality and serving a true and living God, that they may come running, they may come asking, what must I do to be saved? We thank you, God. We thank you for the man of God that you have now placed in our vineyard. We thank you, Father God, for just plucking him out. Even when he thought that this, this part of his journey was over, you said, I still got work for you to do. I got a people over there at First Baptist that needs a word of encouragement. Least they grow weary in their well-doing. We thank you, Father God, that he heeded the command, he heeded the call, and we thank you. We just ask that you would just continue to strengthen him, give him what he stands in need of every day. We thank you for the woman of God that you have placed by his side. Strengthen her that she in turn may give him what he stands in need of. Father, right now, I pray for everyone that is here within our midst. I pray for every home that is represented, every family. I ask that you just touch them. You give them what they stand in need of, because, Father, you already know. You touch, you heal, and you deliver as only you can. And while we stand here to celebrate 188 years, we don't just stand and celebrate 188 years. We stand and celebrate every day that you call us up out of our bed to move and to be with you whom you have called us to be. We thank you, God, because we know that we can't be and we are nothing without you. But it's in your presence that we live, we move, and we have our being. And we are eternally grateful, and we are eternally thankful. God, we just bless your name today. And we will make your name great. We will make your name great. It is our desire, and we strive every day to be the people of God that you have called us to be, that we are your church. And your church has come into worship, and we say thank you. Hallelujah, thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and amen. One hundred and eighty-eight years of the First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town. This is a poem that was written, has been rewritten, that was dedicated by Reverend R. Logan Carson. Congratulations are extended to you, First Baptists, upon this day. 188 years of service you've given in God's sunshine rays. Through years of struggle, pain, and service, you've held the Christian banner forth to tell the town, the state, the country, that God is Lord over all the earth. Through joy and sorrow and depression, through countless passions, endless pain, you've been a light, a searching beacon for sinners both in sun and rain. Through years of friendship, love, and service, when hopes were high, when joy was gone, First Baptist stood and like a steeple, it told the message, dust to dawn. With pastors giving years of service, you stood unmoved upon God's word. And from your pulpit went the message, repent, believe, thus saith the Lord. 
through years of peace, of wars and peace and through recession, your doors have stood there open wide to warm the saints and cheer the sinners and bid the lost to come inside. Through Sunday school and Bible study, through mission work and brotherhood, through singing choirs and ministries, you have proclaimed the Lord is good. Through visitation and revival, through fellowship, home and abroad, You've not neglected your true mission. O oh, souls in trouble, seek the Lord. So rise, First Baptist, going forward. Rejoice in what the Lord has done. Congratulations, upward, onward, until the Christ, until with Christ, your race is won. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. 188 years. Amen. Amen. And amen. Good morning, First Baptist. Oh, this is a beautiful sight. Whew. It's giving time, church. There are five ways to give. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. There are five ways to give. You can mail your offering here to the church at 10600 Watterson Trail, Louisville, Kentucky. 40299. You can drop it off here at the church or also here at the church. There's a kiosk in which you can give. You can give through a recurring withdrawal from your bank account. And you can also give two ways online at the church's website, www.fbcjtown.org. Log on, then click give, or through the team app at www.teamapp.com. Log on, then click giving. However, for those who are worshiping in-house with us today, the offering is going to be at the end of the service. As you leave the church, you will drop your offering. There will be the ushers in the back will, who will have baskets, and you can drop your offering off there. God bless you. And in terms of announcements for today, just uh, if you would uh, pay attention to the announcements that are going to be shown on the screen, both before and after church, uh, that will be a complete listing of all of our prayer requests and announcements there. That concludes my announcements for today. Good afternoon, church. It is so good to see all of you here today. It has been a long time coming. I tell you, I've stood up here a few times and just been speaking to mostly empty pews and to see so many people up here. I mean, I tell you, it's, it's a good thing when the saints of God can come together to the house of the Lord and praise him. I know that uh, somebody said, when I get to the house of the Lord again, I will bless his name. I will praise his name. I will lift up holy hands. I will shout unto God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't really come up here for that, but I, make, I came here to make an announcement, but I just want to bless the name of God for all that he has done. Look at how far he has brought us in a year's time. It is nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to make this announcement. <laughs> I'm going to make this announcement. Okay, so, yes. Um, the communications ministry, that's what I'm here for. So. There is a communications ministry at this church um, that has been operating um, under a few entities, and we have decided to join forces. And I'll just say that we're going to have an introduction video with more to come um, at this time. And for a hint of what is to come, um, there's a video that's going to focus on what you see on the front of your bulletin, and there's a video coming up for uh, what's on the back of the bulletin. 
So in the meantime, enjoy the introduction video. And um, anybody that wants to join the communications or is curious about what's going on can see me or you can see um, Brother Joe and Andre Wilson, uh, and Sister Andre Wilson, and also um, a few others. But yeah, come see me at the service. Y'all can hit me up online for those that are watching. So anyway, without further ado, actually, um, I'll say this. Shout out. We're going to use um, the song that you all have been hearing at the beginning of the service um, and also at the end of the service. It was written by Brother Houston Young over there on the drums. <laughs> Yes, stand, brother. Yes. Isn't it a beautiful song? I was about to go further, but I didn't want to go any further without mentioning him for sure. Um, so the music that you're going to hear is going gonna, is gonna to be that theme song, as you see the video, and that was written by him. So, okay, now, without further ado, here we go, the video. A new day, a new way, a new step, a new hope. The Day the World Changed by Riley George Beatty. Something happened to the world today. A nasty bug called COVID came to stay. They told us to wash our hands and it might go away, but it was not enough to keep the bug at bay. Lockdown was scary and made me cry. I did not want anyone I knew to die. Schools were closed and shops shut down, shop shut down too. At first I gave a big woohoo. At first, um, but then we were told to stay at home and soon I began to moan and groan. Homeschooling started and my mom tried her best, but she is not as good as my teacher, I must confess. <laughs> Being with my family keeps me safe and well but sometimes I feel like I'm living in a cell. An hour of exercise we are allowed every day. Sometimes it takes my sad feelings away. We cop on Thursday for NHS to show them we know they are trying their best. Scientists are trying to find a cure, I'm hoping for it soon, but I am not so sure. I wish it was over and all like before. I'll make sure I see my family much, much more. I'll never forget the day the world changed. The memories I have will always remain.
To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. At this time, we would like to take a few moments to remember, to honor, and to celebrate the lives of the following church members and friends or friends known to have passed in 2020 or early 2021. Barbara Atkins, Earl Dean Best, Verna Burks, Dolores Jones, Barbara Simmons, Dorothy Sterrett, James Henry Trice, and Lawrence Wilson. Though their journey has ended, we can celebrate knowing that their spirits have ascended, claiming the great reward, Jesus our Lord and Savior. Remember me when I am gone, but not with sorrow, pain, and grief. Think of me as a turning leaf that in the winter falls from its branch, to be born again in spring and live forever in our hearts. And now I will close this part of our program with a familiar prayer for all of us who have experienced significant loss over the course of time, many of whom may still be grieving and if you are grieving, please know that First Baptist Church has a grief ministry ready and willing to assist you as you strive to get through the grieving process. May we pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace. The Lord bless you, amen. Some of you may not uh, know a, a lot about me, and some of you that do, that there are times that I have been, uh, for lack of a better term, accused of maybe saying too much. <laughs> well, but with that being said, I would be remiss. I am going to share this, and in discussion, prior to us uh, calling Pastor Gray, that it was to be understood, that he understood that Pastor Gaines was our pastor. <laughs> and would always be our pastor. Now, I'm just assuming, we know what we say about assuming, but I'm just assuming that he understood that and accepted the call anyway. <laughs> so with that being said, Pastor Gaines, it is good to see you. <laughs> Welcome home. And with all due respect to our current interim pastor, we love you. And know that you're always welcome. Know that you're always welcome. Now, well, what I come up here to do is introduce you <laughs> to our pastor. Yeah. Now, we know that, uh, that he has been with us since February the 1st, and we have, we've come to love him. Yeah. We have come to love this man. He is God called, he 
He is God sent, and he has truly been a blessing to First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town. He's Reverend Dr. Kylan Gray. He's a native of Memphis, Tennessee, that he so proudly reminds us of from time to time. He is a graduate of Kentucky State University. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science. He earned his Master of Divinity and Doctor of Ministry degrees from the Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary, where he continues to serve as the Dean of Community Life. He served for 35 years as a senior pastor at New Mount Zion Church at Shelbyville. He is the co-founder of Creative Spirits Ministries, the preaching teaching ministry of Kylan and Reverend Cassandra Gray. He currently resides in Shelbyville, Kentucky with his wife, Reverend Cassandra Harris Gray, yeah. with their two daughters, Lysandra and Michelle, if I pronounced that correctly. We are truly blessed to have this man in our midst. We truly believe that he was God sent. As stated earlier, I think he had a different plan from his life. But God called and said, I got one more thing that I need for you to do. That I've got a people over located 10600 Watterson Trail that goes by the recognition name a First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town that needs a word of encouragement. At least they grow weary from well-doing. And we thank God that he answered the call. He answered the call because he's a called man of God. And any of us that has a relationship with God that knows that when God tells you to do something, he's not going to leave you alone until you answer through his preaching and through his teaching, we truly believe here at First Baptist that we have in our midst the man of God that God would have for us in this season. And Pastor Gray, know that we love you and we are praying you up because we're expecting great things from you. Amen? Amen. So after the next selection or selections from the choir, the next voice you will hear will be that of our very own Reverend Dr. Kylan Gray. We don't want you to relax. We want you to participate with us. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. 
towards me. Your tender mercies I see day after day. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercies I see.
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
all of my burdens, problems. If I have some questions, I put it on. Yes, I put it on. I put it on. It is hand. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Oh, 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 oh,
Let everything that has breath praise the Lord in this house. Let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord for this music ministry. And come on, put your hands together. Give God some glory in this place. How many of you share that testimony that I just can't stop praising his name? Hallelujah. 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 Amen, amen. You may be seated in this place. We got some stuff we got to do. Amen, amen. Wow. Yeah. Listen here. This is not only an anniversary celebration. This is a welcome back celebration. Amen. Now, I know y'all been dancing for a minute, a little bit. But I need you all to do justice to this music department that have just done a tremendous, tremendous job. I know y'all can do a whole lot better than that. That was outstanding. These singers, these musicians, come on now. Come on, First Baptist. A tremendous offering of thanksgiving unto God. Hey Amen. I couldn't, I couldn't keep myself. I was singing when I wasn't supposed to. I was singing over there. My, my wife and I, we were doing a thing over there. Because uh, all of those songs, all of them, is by themselves a testimony of how this church has made it over. 
through many dangers, toils and snares. We have already come. Twas grace that brought us safe, even through COVID, safe thus far. And how many of y'all know that it's going to be grace that's going to lead us on to the Minister of Music, Cameron Daniels, and to the music department, job well done. Job well done. Now, I'm, you know, God doesn't ask you uh, permission to mess your life up. God continues to bless, and my wife came through the door with some good news uh, that I'm not ready to announce quite yet, but just suffice it to say that for our business, for Creative Spirits Behavioral Health, we just got a blessing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We'll be able to share it later on. This coming July, we will be celebrating our 25th year in business. We care for about around 500 families each week with mental and chemical dependency support. And uh, she came through. That's why she was dancing over there, you know. She was dancing. She, had, she got light in her feet. Because the Lord, we just got confirmation of some additional support that we need for our business. And we're so grateful for that, so grateful for that. We're so grateful. Uh, but we also are blessed, and I'm always blessed, uh, to be in this individual's presence. And that is the inimitable pastor of the Consolidated Missionary Baptist Church of Lexington, Kentucky, <laughs> Pastor Richard Gaines. Amen. He, he came back home to celebrate 188 years. We're so great, blessed for you to be here, Pastor, and we're glad that you've taken the time. I know you've got a church. You've got things happening, but you've got an able staff, but uh, this is your home. Amen. And you have blessed this congregation over the years, and the Lord be my helper. We've already had a conversation previously, but the relationship between this church and Consolidated is locked tight. We just want you to know that. Amen. Bless the man of God in this house. Amen. Pastor Richard Gaines. Now, that's not how you honor a pastor. That's not how you do it. That's not how you honor a pastor. Amen. 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 He well deserves honor for the work that he has done in the vineyard of our God, amen. And the last thing I wanna say is it's good to see Frenchie in the house. She popped in there, grabbed that bike and said, I'm gonna do this thing. <laughs> but it's good to see her. Her work among, in the youth is without question and, and she, God is continuing to lead her in tremendous ways throughout the body of Christ. Y'all got to know that us musicians, we hang tight. We support one another throughout this community. Those psalmists and Levites uh, who are moved by tones and harmony and chords, progressions. We hear preaching in music. Sometimes without words, we're moved and hear the voice of God while we're creating compositions the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. We're moved by the tonality of the universe. And it breaks forth in worship from our hearts. And when we sing, we can't even put into words what the experience is when we're singing to our God. And that's why whenever I see a musician, whenever I hear a psalmist, when they're singing and doing what they can, I'm praying and I'm dancing. Because all that went into what you heard, what you don't hear is the sacrifice and the struggle and the humanity under all of that. So I just want to thank God for Frenchie coming and sharing with us and Jerome and Joel and the drummer here. And uh, y'all, we need a bass musician. Amen. We need a bass guitar. We're going to deal with that, but we're going to need something. Yeah, come on. Amen. Um, 
Would you pray with me? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. It's because of you, God, that we're here. And we thank you right now for what you are about to do. Now, God, I pray that you use the words that I offer unto you, God, and through my words and in spite of my voice, I pray that you would help your people to hear your words and your voice. That, God, we might follow you and please you in all pleasing. Spirit of the living God, breathe on us now and have your way in this place. We ask it in the name of Jesus and all the people of God said together, amen. I'm going to preach from, to you this morning from the theme of this anniversary celebration, a little phrase from that theme, and using the text of our celebration, 1 Corinthians the 16th chapter, verses 13 and 14. Thank you, God. Mm. First Corinthians, amen. Will you stand if you found it? Doesn't matter how many people count you out. As long as you've got a relationship with the one who counts you in. <laughs> I want to read these two verses, and I'm reading them from the New King James Version. First Corinthians, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 13. Whatever version you have, it is the word of God. So we just ask that you follow. And if you don't have a Bible, you have the scriptures before you on the projector screen. Watch, stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. Go back to that previous verse again. Watch, stand fast in the faith. Be brave, this is New King James Version, and be strong. 14th verse, whatever you do, it don't even matter what, is the sense of the text. That whatever you do, let all that you do be done with love. You may be seated in this place. I'm going to try to do my best to share for a brief moments, and I promise I won't keep you long today. Uh, from this thought, stand strong in the Lord. Stand strong in the Lord. I want you to uh, take note that uh, we have something very special coming up for Mother's Day next month. I want to announce to the church that our guest preacher for Mother's Day is the Reverend Cassandra Denise Harris Gray. And I'm just going to ask y'all to buckle up your seats and get ready. She's coming with the boom, boom, pow. Amen. We find our text and this celebration at the close of significant interaction from the Apostle Paul to one of his beloved congregations, the church in Corinth. I tend to think about the church of Corinth as a miracle church. And I say that intentionally when I think about the church at Corinth, if Bible scholars, Bible students understand that this was a very interesting place to establish a church for the Apostle Paul. It's the one of the places where commerce was prevalent during the time that Paul is writing at this moment. 
a lot of ships and commerce was coming through the land of Corinth. Very interestingly, shipping around that peninsula of Greece was very, very dangerous because the seas were sort of rough. And so many a times they had this, they developed this idea to take ships and instead of floating them around the bottom of the peninsula of Greece, there was an isthmus, this little waterway, that they would park ships and then have people put ships on sticks or loads and carry the ship from one side of Greece to the other to try to save time. And along the way, Corinth, Corinth picked up a lot of stuff from a lot of different nations and a lot of peoples. It became notorious and famous for its culture, famous for its many different expressions of spirituality, it became known as most seafaring towns, as the, play, as the city of what's happening now two different streams of spirituality that floated through Corinth was one was the god of this Poseidon. Poseidon was one of the things that they worshiped during that time in Corinth, the god of the sea. You can understand that with all the seafarers and ship persons that were coming through. Uh, their fears and their experiences of the sea prompted the human impulse of worship toward that which was the best that they knew, and Poseidon was one of them. And the other focus of their worship in Corinth was the god Aphrodite. Aphrodite was the fertility god. It was the god that was the main source of the national economy of Achaia, which was the country that Corinth was in. Aphrodite is the god of the blessing of the crops, where they had a serious belief that they, they pulled together temple priestesses into a particular spiritual temple, and their idea was that their crops would be blessed and their families would be blessed if they had relations with the temple priestesses. In that culture, Paul established a church. In that culture where to be called, it, to be a woman and to be called a Corinthian meant that they just cussed you out and called you a name that was not respectable for your humanity. That's just how known the immoral sexuality of that space was. That part of the cultural parlance was when you want to insult someone, you just simply say, you old Corinthian. <laughs> now don't y'all leave here in Jesus' name and look at somebody and say, you Corinthian, you. You'll get another kind of look. You might not survive that engagement. But I need you to hear this. First Baptist, Paul was led by God to establish a church in that kind of culture. Now, we know that when you establish a church in a culture like that, that the converts to Christianity come out of that. They come straight out of that type of thing. And so part of the conversion experience it's people making the commitment. Somebody holla commitment. Making the commitment to leave one type of life into a newness of life. And you and I know that we don't leave all the way. I know you look good this morning. And you have your holy face on. Can I get some people that can give a witness that there are moments in my life when I ain't all the way saved? Yeah. 
Now that's the truth. Catch any of us on the wrong day. Where my real witness is at in here. And you're going to need some prayer before I begin to speak my first word. Because the truth of the matter is that as we are converted to Christ, God saves us from our sins, but not from our humanity. And Paul had to deal with some things in this church. There was a lot of cray-cray going on in the Corinthian church. Just like it's a whole lot of cray-cray that goes on in all of our churches. Now, I call Corinthian, the Corinthian church a miracle church. In the same way, I'm going to call First Baptist a miracle church. And here's why. Here's why I make that de designation. With what we have come out of, with what we daily struggle with, and with what God has brought us through, we're still standing. Now, I know I felt that when I said that. I know somebody else in this house can give a testimony that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, it wasn't me because if it was left up to me, I would have hurt some people. I would have messed up myself, but it was because of the grace and mercy of Almighty God that we're still here. I need somebody that has that faith and that conviction and that confession to give God your best praise because you know that you're still standing because of the mercy and the love and the grace of our God. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm still here. They counted me out, but I'm still here. They thought it was over for me, but I'm still here. By his grace, hallelujah, I'm still here. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. That's a show enough miracle. That's a teetotal miracle <laughs> that I'm still standing. Paul dealt with uh, leadership issues in this church. Say amen. amen. He dealt with schisms in this church. Say amen. amen. He dealt with folk that thought they was more spiritual than others in this church. Say amen. amen. He dealt with folk. It was a gifted church, a wonderfully gifted church. Spiritual gifts flying all over the place. And they still didn't know how to act. Say amen. They mistook the Lord's Supper for an afternoon meal. Say amen. They had some sexual issues in the church that they couldn't get a handle on. Somebody did a good amen. No, you said you're supposed to say a good amen. amen. <laughs> it's a whole lot of issues. And they had some doctrinal issues in this church. They had confusions about the resurrection because they had to continue to contend with Gnostic types of thinking that misled their thinking about the veracity of the, of the resurrection. And Paul, through all of the chapters of this book, through 15 chapters prior to the 16th chapter, with his pen, couldn't nobody straighten the church out with an ink pen like Paul could. Most of the legends say that Paul wasn't that much of a preacher. I mean, whenever you start preaching, and somebody's leaning out of a window and go to sleep and fall and breaks his neck, you horrible. <laughs> but then if that happens, you ought to have enough anointed power to go down and lay hands on him and lift him right back up and bring him back to where he needs to go. But Paul could help us in our faith just by writing. And he wrote to this church with love, and he gave directions, and he gave instructions throughout this entire book. And now he's winding up and closing. He's coming to a close. He's closing this book in the 16th chapter, 
And what many writers and many scholars say is a by-the-way statement. They don't even claim this 13th voice to be, many scholars don't claim this 13th verse to be intentional of Paul. That it was some write it or describe it as a, as a space filler because he's really coming to the close of his arguments and then moving beyond the arguments to some final instructions with people that's going to be de that they're going to be dealing with as part of Paul's posse. And it would be interesting that this church would select as an anniversary celebratory verse this 13th and 14th verse. Stand strong. Be courageous. Be brave. And with everything you do, do it in love. A by the way verse. A by the way verse, a verse that some scholars say was not even intentional, is left in the letter of 1 Corinthians just for us today. It's instructions for how to move from where you've been to God's next. And I stand, I'm standing before you today to report to you that there is a next for First Baptist. And I want all y'all to see it, the Lord willing. So I want you to hear what the Lord wants you to hear from these wonderful verses left for us for our consideration. Paul gives us five things in these two verses that I'm going to leave with you that's going to help this church, you and I, go to God's next. The thing about God's next is God doesn't give any previews. I said God doesn't give any previews. You don't know God's next till you're in it. And many times we want a preview so that we can prepare ourselves or we think we will for God's next. But some of us, for some of us, God's next will scare the hell out of us. Because God's next may not be your pick. God's next for you might expend more resources than you plan to expend. God's next might mean that you're going to have to forgive some folk you'd rather hurt. God's next might mean that you'll have to apologize for what you didn't do. God's next may mean that you have to admit some things that's hard for you to admit. God's next might mean that you have to say goodbye to some stuff that you really love. God's next may mean that you have to let go of some things that you've been holding on to for a long time. God's next may mean that you have to change your mind about who you are. But whatever it calls, I would rather grab hold and see God's next than my own next because my best laid plan got me in the mess I was in before can I get a witness in so I really want to know how to grab hold under God's next so listen to what Paul says can you pull can you all get that 13th verse back up that that uh, uh 13th verse back for me amen watch stand fast in the faith be brave be strong. The first thing that Paul tells us in order for us to be able to stand strong is to watch. Somebody say watch. And that word simply means be alert, be attentive, watch. Don't miss this next thing that God is getting ready to do. I need you to be watchful. Now, a part of what watchful means is this. I need you on your post. Push on your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's time to get back in the game. Amen. 
I can't be alert if I'm completely out of pocket. I cannot be alert looking for God's next if I'm not even in a position to see. And the position for us in this moment and in this time is whatever you were doing, whatever you were engaged in, in this community and for the sake of Jesus Christ, it is not any time to be out or off your post. It's time to get back on where you were doing and to be alert for God's next. God says, I had an assignment for you and there's no situation on earth that is greater than your assignment. I need you alert back where you're supposed to be. Be alert, and that is an expression of being open to God's love opportunities. Because this business that we're in is a love business. We're to love each other like Jesus loved. And so in order to do that, I have to be in position to do it. Amen. That means that if something hits me and calls me to pack up, it's time for me to shake myself and step back in the game and be watchful, be alert. The image, the biblical image, is the image of a battle. And the enemy is approaching. And the image is that in order for the enemy not to overcome the position I'm in, I need to be watching. I need to be alert. I need to be in a position where I am ready to either advance or maneuver, but never retreat. I need to be in a position where I can see the enemy coming ahead and are able to, with wisdom and insight, know how to shift my position so God's program can continue to go on. Does, do you all hear what I'm saying in here? God says for your next to be accomplished and to be seen and to be experienced, I need you to be alert because there are going to be love opportunities coming. Your next includes opportunities to show the love of Jesus Christ when you least expect it. To be able to share the heart of God when you least expect it. So I need you to be alert. Someone says alert. Second thing he wants us to know is that we need to be faith-filled. Let the church say faith-filled. Let's be the love people we say that we are. Amen, amen. Now, I've been in this place, I'm still the new kid on the block, just since February. And I told y'all that I'm in love with your tagline. I'm in love with it. Because y'all keep telling me that. And y'all keep saying that to me. Love is the first Baptist way. How many of y'all believe that? Wait, wait, hold on, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. How many of y'all down for that? You down for, y'all understand that phrase down, right? Y'all you, you, understand it. How, how many of y'all down for that? Well, here's what this next statement is saying. Be faith filled, which means that your faith is that you are love and that if love is the first Baptist way, my admonishment and my encouragement is to be the people you say you are. It's time to be that. And listen, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, we're living in a time in this nation and a time in this world where if there's not a time where we needed more than ever before to see the loving church of God be the love that Jesus was, this is now the time as, as never before we have a moment where we need to express the love of Jesus. And the Lord sent me to tell you he's looking for some folk that's ready to go, that's alert, that's back in the game and ready to live out that tagline that you love so much, love is the first Baptist way. If love is the first Baptist way, then I need some folk to come with me because there's some folk that desperately need to see the love of Jesus in 2021. <laughs> this American house is in a mess. And the world is hungry. I said the world is hungry. This country is hungry 
to see some for real, for real Christians. Not Christians that mistake Christ to be a Republican or a Democrat. Not, not, not Christians that are Christians just because the light is on. But this world needs to see some Christians who know how to love. And they don't love because they feel like they owe God anything. But they love because they know that if it hadn't been for God, whoo, I'm going to do this for you, and I'm going to do this with you, and I'm going to hang in there with you, and I'm going to walk you through what you got to go through, and I'm not going to leave you, and I love you, and ain't a doggone thing you can do about it. I'm going to stick in there with you until I see you. See Jesus for yourself. And when you see Jesus for yourself, I'm going to walk you to the baptismal pool, and I'm going to watch you give your life to Jesus. And when you come up out of that water, we're going to dance together. It's not hard to love. Love ain't hard. Loving enemies ain't hard. Loving people who are hateful is not hard. As long as we move ourselves out of the way and let Christ be the Lord of our lives. Be faith-filled means to be filled with love. You just can't bear to see someone struggle or suffer without doing what you can to make their lives better. First Baptist, when people come into your presence and when they leave your presence, they ought to be better than when they came into your presence. The third thing that he says is to be courageous. I'm almost done, y'all. Be courageous. Now, for those of you that read the King James Version, your version doesn't say be brave. Uh, I read to you from the New King James Version. For the KJV people in the room, your version doesn't say be courageous. It reads like this. Quit yourselves like men. How'd that sound? That's what the King James Version says. The King James Version says, watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men and be strong. That's the King James Version. Now, that's a problem. <laughs> that's an issue. Quit you like men is an archaic phrase. It's an archaic literary phrase that gives the sense, and it is translated co correctly in the New King James Version and other translations, as be courageous. But here's the issue. Paul is writing to a male audience. Because most of the people that were his students were men. And in most male spaces, when we're talking to each other, we talk to each other with the male gaze. And that's what Paul is doing in this text. He's addressing this entire church from the male gaze. Trying to encourage the entire church, he says to the church, quit ye like men. In other words, stand, and here's what the word in the, in the Greek Androzomai, this word means to be like a man, act like a man. That's what that means in that text. Act. Hey, y'all, First Baptist, act like a man. Yeah, that's what we would say. We would say, man up. Some, somebody, a woman said that in here. Man up. That's that phrase. Now, now, here in, the Bible students here in is where we have text in a particular translation that is specific to culture and history. Paul is speaking to and addressing the church, and in those times when they're addressing the church, they're addressing men. And it was the culture of that time for the men to hear the instruction of the word of God and then go home and teach 
their women. Woo, y'all should see the looks I got coming up in this place right about now. Now that's the King KJV. That's the KJV. The KJV says that, that you're supposed to have this instruction, bruh. And then after you have this instruction, you go home, bruh, and you uh, go and teach your wife or your children or the women in your household. Because at that time, when instruction went on, women were not allowed in the house. So he could say, quit ye like men. But now, we know better. Because we know now that women don't have to act like men to be strong. Now the men looking at me now. <laughs> women don't have to act like a man to be a leader. And you know, we've got full conversation in our country about the mental and spiritual anguish that female leaders in corporate America and other nonprofit spaces experience unspoken because the tacit expectation of women leaders is that they have to lead like a brother. But we know better. I certainly don't want my wife to act like a man. I want her to be Cassandra Gray. This is translated to give the value of courage. But I have to say this, I'm pausing here for a purpose. And I'm pausing here for a purpose is because the kingdom of God is male and female. So says the book of Genesis. And that when God created all of us, he did not create either one of us to be like the other. He created us to be who he created us to be. Now here's the thing, y'all. You can't tell somebody who God created them to be. Quit ye like men is a phrase, Mount, uh, 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 First Baptist, where he's saying to you, I need you to have courage to love when people look at you crazy for who you love him. I need you to gird yourself up with your love loins and understand that you need to love people irregardless of how people think about them. And what makes this space the Christian space it is, is that you put no qualifications on your love. Because in this time that Paul is talking to the church of Corinth, they had to love people who were in trouble with Rome. They had to love people who were not lovable by other cultures. And they found a home in the Christian house because that Christian house loved them regardless. And they loved them regardless because they remembered how lost they used to be and how Jesus saved them. And so they place no qualification on their love for anybody. And I just need to ask First Baptist, how in the world did we move from that kind of love that Jesus shared to a love where we put qualifications on who gets loved the most? So much more to say about that. So much more to say about that. But this phrase, quit ye like men, is, is an is a admonishment for the church that says, be courageous. Because I don't know about you, but to love people, it takes courage. It takes courage to love people who other people have written off. 
It takes courage to love people who people have castigated to hell already, and they are not God, nor is their first name Jesus, nor their title is Christ, but they've already sent folk to hell because of what they halfway know about their lives, and they don't know half what God knows about that person, and they come up in the church, and they don't look the part, they don't dress the part, they have a lifestyle that don't look like yours, and yet you already make the judgment on who they are, and Paul says, I need you to be courageous to love them just like they were you. And when you create a space in a worship space like that, you talk about can't keep folk out of the door. Everybody wants to be loved unconditionally. And for us to preach an unconditional love and then turn around and put conditions on that love is not the love of Jesus Christ. So I don't necessarily need you to quit ye like men. My encouragement to you, First Baptist, is in 2021, you're going to need some courage to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Let me jump on down to the last point. I've kept you too long. The gist of all of it is this. In this, by the way, verse that some scholars say that Paul maybe was just not even intending to write. Maybe he was just filling in the space. This is not a filling the space moment for First Baptist Church. First Baptist, you've been through a lot. But we ain't going to talk about that no more. We're moving on. And the instruction is this. Because you've been through what you've been through, because of the weight of your broken heart, because of the trepidation that you may feel while you're moving forward, here's what the Lord says to you. I need you to make the choice to love anyway. I want you to make the choice to love in spite of everything that could fill your conversations for the next six months. The Lord says to this church today, I need you to make a choice to love anyway. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God loved the world so much that he gave his best gift. His name is Jesus. Stepped him down through 40 and two generations knowing the mess that we were in and the mess that we are. He sent his perfect son to die on Calvary's cross. And on the third day, he arose with all power in his hand to ensure that the church would have the covering of the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can learn how to love like Jesus loved. God says, don't let what you've been through get in your love way. Because there are people that are hungry for Jesus Christ. And if we would dare make the choice to love, not the feeling of love, but the choice of love, if we dare to do that first Baptist, you won't be able to keep people from it. Because people are hungry for the love of God. You've been through all kinds of stuff. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And Paul says, I've addressed all of those issues that are the prominent issues of the Corinthian church. And you've addressed a lot of your stuff. 
but you can't live there. You can't live there. Watch. Be strong. Stand in your most holy faith. Have some courage. And whatever you do, First Baptist, for 189, whatever you do, do it in love. God, like my mama used to say, we know that we're just breath in pants. We're nobodies trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. All of our righteousness, God, is as filthy rags before your sight. We all have sinned and have fallen short of your glory. There's none righteous, not a one of us. We've been lame, laid at the gate beautiful. We've been going to wells with water pots, searching for some significance in our life. We've tried to do work with withered hands and continue to break things in our life because our hands are weak. We've gotten insecure at times in our life and so we begin to start taking things and adding things to the blessing we give to people just to help ourselves. And at some times, God, we have been so rageful from the trauma of our lives and we've been, we found ourselves in a graveyard chained up to tombstones because won't nobody hear my heart. We've been fed, God, with other people's blessing, with others got blessed. We, was just, we got fed just because we were in the party. God, we have been died to things in our life and it took you to speak in front of our grave and to raise us from the dead somewhere along the way God we've mistaken the fact that it was our holiness or it was our good works that got us here but God we recognize that over 188 years it wasn't us it was you it was you all alone. In our glorious days and in our worst days, God, it's been you. And we're ready now for your next. We're ready to move on, God. We, we've suffered a long time. We've wept. We've cried, God. We've, huh, we've argued. We've, we've, we've been worried. But God, we're ready to move. So we thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you for what you have shared with us today, God, because we need to know how to stand strong in you. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take us standing strong with one another. So God, we thank you for our brother. We thank you for our sister. We thank you for the children of this church. We thank you for the teenagers. We thank you for the leaders. We thank you for the ministerial staff. We thank you for the, the, for the employed staff, the volunteer staff. We thank you for every connection of this congregation that, Lord, throughout the last 14 months of a global pandemic, we still stand strong. But God, we want to go forward in you this time. We want to go in your glory this time. We want to go allowing you to have your way this time. We want to allow you to just do what you have always wanted to do this time. We give you our hearts, our minds, our strength, our hands, and our feet. This time, God, we are commit ourselves 
to do everything that we do in your love. And we're going to need your help. So God, I pray for every ministry team leader. I pray for every deacon, every trustee. I pray for every officer. I pray for every person connected to this church, every family, every address connected to this house. I pray for everyone that's li that lives under the addresses connected to this congregation. And I thank you, God, for the families that you're sending this way. I thank you in advance for the people who will find life, light, and hope in this congregation. I thank you, God, for the folk who will turn their lives around because they found you in this place i thank you in advance for what you're about to explode in this place and i thank you for the person who is watching right now who's ready to stand in you and to give their heart totally to you in the name of jesus we pray amen and amen can somebody put your hands together and bless the lord in this place You are important to me. I need you to survive. Mm -hmm. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Hallelujah. You are Can we sing that together? Can we do one more round of that and sing that together for the 188th anniversary? I need you. I need you need me. We're all. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will. It is here that every need be supplied. Need be supplied. You are important. We stand in this congregation in our Christian tradition, understanding that this is the moment where we extend an invitation for discipleship. And what that simply means is that this is the most sacred moment of worship. We invite you to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ and make him Lord of your life. The Bible is clear. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But with the mouth confession is made into salvation, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. The promise of scripture is that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It would be our privilege and our joy to be a part of your faith journey, with your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. We invite you to reach out to us through our website. There's a place on our website where you can contact us and let us know that you've decided to give the Lord Jesus your heart and that you're decided to give him your life. We'll be glad to follow up with you. Our team will get in touch with you and let you know what next steps are. We also want you to know that if you're looking for a church home, no need to look any further. First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town would glad to be the place of your faith formation where you learn about Christ and learn about Christ's people and learn about the gifts that God has placed on the inside of you. We would love to have that privilege to walk with you in your Christian journey. 
let us know. We'll be glad to share with you, and we're glad to hear from you. Amen. You may be seated in this place. been an awesome celebration. At this time, if we have the church anniversary committee in-house, would you all please stand? The church anniversary committee in-house. Let's give them a hand clap of thank you. Are there any remarks coming from any of you? Sister India? At this time, we have a presentation of flowers. Good morning, good afternoon. We, we press that stone through it all. Still standing strong in the Lord. I'm so happy to be here this morning. So many of you have expressed your happiness in being here this morning. It, it was just awesome. Thank you, Reverend Gray, always thank you. We started our church anniversary underneath the leadership of Miss Patsy, and she kind of handed over to Miss India. She was co-team leader, which then became ministry team leader. So if she could come on up just for a second. She's not expecting this, but. <laughs> it states to rejoice always, pray continuously, and give thanks in all circumstances. And the committee that stood, we rejoiced when we found out we were coming back in the building. And then we started praying because we didn't know we was coming back in the building. <laughs> and then we thank God because we made it back in the building. So I got something for you as well as the committee. We want to say thank you for putting up with us for all the drop Zoom calls. For, for those of us who couldn't get on the Zoom calls, <laughs> but we made it. Thank you. So stay right here. So you always hear the old saying says, you get it from your mama. She couldn't be here. She wouldn't be standing right here if it wasn't for Miss Patsy. We all know that Miss Pats, Ms. Patsy believes in training you up and preparing you. So we love you, Miss Patsy. and this bouquet is for you. Thank you so much for teaching and guiding us. Thank you. And thanks to everybody here. You know, it's happy anniversary. I try to tell as many of you as possible happy anniversary. If I missed anyone or if anyone from the committee missed anyone, we just want to say happy anniversary. One more thing. You know you see me when you come through the door. I love celebrating people. I love to say hello. I love black people. Amen. And I love black love. I think we just had a couple celebrated a wonderful anniversary this past Friday. Stand up, people. Give them some love. I believe it was 38 years. Stand up, people. Ain't nothing like black love. Happy anniversary. Thank you, First Baptist. Wow. Thank you. It has been a it has been a month-long anniversary celebration. 38 years together. We met on the, first, on the front steps of Kentucky Hall, Kentucky State University, during the first week of school. 
and we have talked to each other every day for now 41 years. She still pulls on me. I'm ready to go home now. <laughs> Stand to your feet. Mm. I wish you could see what I see right now. Again, I want to thank uh, Pastor Gaines for coming and sharing this moment with us. Pastor, is there, would you like to have a word at all? Would you like to share anything at all? Yes, please come. Please come. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. To God be the glory for great things he has done uh, to reverends, Mr. and Mrs. Gray, uh, to my home church family. Uh, congratulations on a wonderful anniversary today. Uh, amen, amen. We of course bring you greetings from the Consolidated Church just a few miles to the east where the grass is a little blue. Uh, just a little bit. They play a little volleyball, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm just glad to be here. I bring you greetings not only from the church, but from my wife and from Sarah and Micah, yes. who used to be on the second pew when he was a little bitty boy. He's now 26 and almost 27 and headed toward marriage, so keep him in prayer. <laughs> Amen. But I just, I just want to say it is good to be home. Uh, as Reverend was preaching, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, uh, of this church and my time here with you and what you've been through and I hear Jesus in Matthew 16 saying upon this rock yes. Yes. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it your best days are yet ahead and, and Reverend I would book in it with Romans 8 28 and we know uh, we know despite what we've been through we know that he works all these things together for the good of them that love him and are the called according to his purpose. So keep the faith, keep pressing on. God's got you in the hollow of his hand. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. You read my bio and you saw all of the things theologically that I was able to experience, but what you all need to know is that I first started theological training because of this man right here. Amen. While he was serving here at First Baptist, he was the admissions director or the assistant admissions director at Southern Baptist Seminary. And in the year 1990 is when I started theological studies and Richard Gaines got me into school. And I've never, ever forgotten that. And so he is endeared to me as much as he is endeared to this place here. Thank you for being here, sir. Receive, receive the benediction, y'all. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon thee. And may the good Lord give you his peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all of the people of God said together, amen.
hope you were blessed by this worship experience. If you need prayer, consultation, or have a desire to become a member of the First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town, please call the church at 502-267-6121. Remember, love is the First Baptist way. Be blessed. <laughs> 